Twin Sisters Digital Media presents The Little School Bus That Talked, written by Brenda Martin Eldridge, illustrated by Shirley Bex. It was the first day of school. It was also the first time that the bright new shiny little yellow school bus had been taken out of the garage to drive the children to school. He felt very proud and excited as he pulled up to the bus stop and saw all the children waiting for him. Soon, all of his <laughs> seats were filled with chattering, laughing children. The little school bus went through the middle of the town and stopped right in front of the school door, waiting while all the children got out. In the afternoon, the little school bus took the children back home again. Then his driver took him to the gas station to have his tank filled. As he stood beside the gas pump, he began to feel a little sad. He wished he could laugh and talk with the children and be their friend. But the trouble was, he had no voice. Then a strange thing happened. The gasoline which had been pumped into his tank was cold. And when the driver started his engine, it made him cough. At first he was rather surprised because he had never heard himself cough before. Then, suddenly, he was filled with excitement because he knew he must have a voice after all. That night, while the other buses were sleeping, the little school bus practiced using his new voice. He coughed again to get the feeling of making a sound. Then he tried to say some of the words he had heard the children saying. Suddenly, in a loud, clear voice, he said, I can do it! The little school bus was too excited to sleep that night. So he stood in his place, waiting for what would surely be the most thrilling day of his life. Talking to the children was not as easy as the school bus thought it would be. They were all busy talking to each other. But as they were driving through the town, the traffic light turned red and the little school bus stopped. In his loudest voice, he said, I have to stop for a moment because the light is red. The children asked, Who said that? I did, said the little school bus very proudly. It's my new voice. At that, the driver stopped the bus. Everyone jumped out to see where the voice was coming from. The traffic in the street all stopped too. A crowd was gathering. Before anyone knew what was happening, there was a traffic jam that filled the whole street. The Johnson twins, Bobby and Tommy, looked at each other and said, It's a trick. Let's look all around to see who is making this voice. They began to walk around the bus, looking underneath and inside and everywhere. Then they came around to the front of the bus and stood staring at it. What they did not know was that the little yellow school bus was staring back at them in great surprise. He had seen a lot of people since he came from the factory where he was made, but never before had he seen two people who looked exactly alike. The school bus just had to ask a question about this curious matter, so he said, are there really two of you who look exactly alike? The twins looked underneath the engine, then stepped back again. Are there really two of you? The school bus asked again. The twins looked at each other and began to giggle. Could it be that the school bus was really able to speak? Bobby felt a little strange to be talking to a school bus, but he answered, we're twins. That means we look alike. The bus thought for a moment. School buses are alike, he said. So are fire engines. But I thought people had their own special faces. Tommy helped his brother explain. Some twins are more alike than others. 
When you have seen us a few more times, it will be easier for you to see the difference between us. The little school bus answered happily, I shall watch for you every day, and as soon as I can tell you apart, I shall call out, Hello, Bobby, and Hello, Tommy. The traffic jam in the street now blocked all the other streets as well. A policeman came over to the little yellow school bus and asked the driver, Would you kindly explain to me what has been going on here? Bobby and Tommy spoke up together. The school bus has been talking. He has a wonderful new voice. The policeman frowned and looked doubtful. He had never heard of a school bus being able to talk. Standing in front of the bus, he said sternly, If you can talk, I'd like to hear you say something. Then he quickly added, But not too loud. We can't have another disturbance. The school bus answered in its quietest voice, I'm very sorry, officer. I only wanted to talk to the children and be their friend. The policeman was so surprised he jumped and his hat almost fell off. The policeman thought for a moment. Then he said, I can see that you are a very special bus and it would make the children very happy to have you as their friend. But you must promise me that you will only talk to them when there are no grown-ups nearby. Most grown-ups are not ready for such surprises. Then he added, and we can't have another disturbance. The school bus thought that was a very good idea because he did not want any more traffic jams. So, using his quietest voice again, he said, I promise, officer. The bus driver led the children back into the bus. Quickly, children, we're late for school. So if one morning when the school bus arrives, you hear him whisper, Hello, isn't it a lovely day? Just pat his yellow paint as you walk up the steps. He will know you heard and that you are his friend. And if you are standing in front of his headlights and you wink your eye, you might even see him wink back.